Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'm back. <laughs> so I wanted to do a video on the shocks, um, upper bushings, control arm bushings, and uh, give some pointers. So did mine uh, yesterday. It was a vast improvement. And as you're probably aware, in my prior video, I did the engine mounts uh, about a month ago, and that helped. So car actually handles a lot better. So if you take a look at your... Uh, strut towers you'll take a look if you notice more than about I would say that much of a gap right what's that about a half inch gap then your bushings that sit on top of your struts are wore out so uh, I would change them uh, what I did uh, is you're gonna have to use an offset 22 millimeter wrench and you need a seven millimeter um, Allen key to get in here. So you're gonna have to drop the wrench in first, then you hold the shaft with your Allen key. You gotta make sure you seat that Allen key inside the shaft on this uh, strut because it'll strip out. It's uh, just touchy. Um, so you can remove this cap, right? And then once you remove this cap, of course you go under the vehicle and uh, you know, you got to loosen your, uh, uh, you got to take your tire off, you got to take the uh, drive shaft nut off, okay? Uh, different varying torque sequences from the manufacturer on torquing the nuts on the drive shafts, and, and, and you got different people saying different things. What I found, I've done the torque specs from VW, I think it's 150 pounds roll the car backwards and forwards uh, you know torque it loosen it torque it back down at 37 pounds or whatever it was and then half a turn it was just ridiculous so I've done that and had the uh, nut come loose on me so I'm just telling you what I've done you do what you want if your tire falls off that's your responsibility I just torque mine down to 150 pounds with a quarter turn okay eighth to a quarter turn after that so um, what other pointers can I give? So I did the upper strut bushing. Uh, be careful with your uh, compression strut compression uh, tools on your strut spring. You know they can they're very dangerous. So be careful with that. Um, you want to do them evenly. So when you're doing them compressors for the springs, you want to do a little bit on one side. Make sure they're they're on either side of the spring, and you're going to you know wrench it down to compress that spring evenly as best you can wear safety glasses in case something cuts loose you don't lose an eye um, and then you're going to remove your um, control arm um, you're going to remove your tie rod and uh, of course your brake lines and what have you or, you know the electrical connector for the uh, ABS uh, and the brakes you got to remove that off the strut so you can pull the strut out. Um, so what I did, and of course the three bolts that hold the control arm in, they're underneath, right? To the hub. So you remove those. Uh, and then you can pull the hub out, slide it off the drive shaft, and gently drop it out. Now you should have something like a bungee cord. Take a bungee cord, go under your drive shaft, and hook it back up into this this cup tower here okay so you gotta support your drive shaft you don't want it just dangling right so you bring that bungee cord or loop it around underneath the drive shaft and come up and bring the hooks over from underneath over the top of this to hold your drive shaft you pull your strut out and you can do that um, I use the uh, better bushings uh, I think they were VR6 ones or what have you I don't remember off the top of my head if it were me on the strut bushings, I would go with a, a, a you know, as strong and stiff a one as you can get. Cause you want it to wear a long time. Um, sway bar bushings were kind of a pain in the ass because um, there's a little, it's a clip that clips into the body, and it, you'll see it. You got a 13 millimeter bolt that you undo on top, and then this clip rolls forward on the sway bar, and you got to use a sway bar to push the clip forward, right? and it has the rubber bushing that is inside that clip. Putting it back together was a real bear. You want to use some silicone spray on the new bushing and on the uh, 
sway bar so you can lubricate it and you can get it back in a lot easier that way. Uh, pressing the bushings in, don't do any of this stuff on the control arm bushings unless you have the proper press. It's very hard to get the, the those those bushings in, uh, the rear ones I believe, the, the hockey puck ones, right? They're a pain in the ass to get in if you don't have a way to press them in and you don't want to damage them. Uh, I, I used a press to get them in and uh, a vise. It was just a bear and a sledgehammer. <laughs> and, and I got creative. Uh, I'll never do it again without the Volkswagen kit for pressing control arm bushings. This is the last time. I mean, this is like the fourth time I've done this. I'm not doing it again without the kit. So go on eBay, do yourself a favor, save yourself a lot of grief, and buy the uh, bearing uh, or bushing set, bushing tool for doing the control arm. If you can find one that'll do both. I haven't found one yet. I found one that does the uh, hockey puck style ones and not the round ones. Um, if you want to get them out easy, what I found, I just burned mine out and then uh, you know, took a sawzall on the hockey puck bushing and cut the race out. Because you burn out the rubber, you still have a race in there. And then take the sawzall to cut the race out and then you can pop it out with a hammer. Uh, the other one, you have to clean out the hole uh, it's a cigar looking bushing, right? You got to clean out the hole with a razor after you burn it out. Um, PB blasters seem to work really good. I tried some silicone spray to press these in and it didn't, you know, really give me the lubrication I needed. So I used PB, bla PB blaster. I hope that doesn't affect the rubber. I'm assuming this rubber's resistant to uh, solvents and uh, oils. I assume so. So it should be okay there. Um, what else did I do? So I did the front and rear uh, bushings on the control arms, uh, sway bar bushings. I did the shock upper bushings, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it was a huge difference in the ride height on the vehicle, also. So I'm riding a, about honestly, I'm riding about two inches higher on the front. I'm a little high in the back. I've never brought this up. What I've done in the rear end, so I'll bring it up now. So what I've done on the rear end, if you take a look in here, you can see I've I've actually added in the. Uh, these are uh, air shocks for a uh, Cadillac, right? And you can look that up on the forums. But So I modified this with a semi-hose here. And this is a braided steel line that goes between the semi-truck tires. And what that does is allow the two tires to be aired up at one time on semis. You get that at Napa, right? And then PC7 is about the toughest epoxy you can use. I've used it on a racing boat. Hold the lower uh, water pickup on my... Uh, gear case so I use PC7 all the time where I can and as much as I can um, when I'm doing something that I need not to fail so how this works is my Schrader valves up in here right right here so if I want to air these up I can go to 200 pounds on these shocks ride for ride height right now I'm running about 35 40 pounds I ride a little bit high but that's okay um, I don't mind and uh, I also filled these shocks uh, half full with that green slime okay the reason why I did that is if these ever go flat and there's nothing in them there's no air in them and the air shocks go flat you'll destroy them if my air shock goes flat for any reason if they're half full of green slime the green slime will prevent damage up inside that shock assembly so I don't have it getting all tore up so uh, but I keep an eye on them I keep check my ride height on these things see every now and then and check the pressures once in a while but I never leak right so I use that crappy little plastic fitting set that comes with these that you can use. And uh, see this side's probably a pound or two higher or, or, or more because I'm off by about a half inch on this side. And uh, new bushings on the rear. That's, all, that's another thing, you do the rear, seriously, get the rear bushing kit, uh, tool kit that you allow you to do the rear bushings. They're real bare too. So. That's going to be next on my shopping list of specialty tools I'm going to get for this vehicle. It's going to be the bushing tool set off eBay for the rear bushes and the front control arm bushings. And uh, that's that's coming up. So I'll have them. I ain't going to worry about fighting this stuff anymore. So if I'm towing, oh yeah, by the way, yes, right? So I got my car running on Monday, right? If you watched my prior video, I've been working on this thing and finally got all the bugs worked out of it. Monday was the first day a car's running great. Guess what happens? Guess what happens Wednesday? 
Murphy's Law comes down and bites me in the ass. An idiot in a bread truck without any insurance, without a license to be driving the bread truck that he's using for work, rear ends me. That was a joy. <laughs> I was not a happy camper. Anyway, my bumper is in the shop getting repainted, and it's on his dime. So anyway, that's where we're at. So uh, air shocks in the rear. Um, I had to use a special fitting here. Um, you can figure it out, right? So, I mean, you go to Napa, get this air shock or, or this airline that goes between the semi tires, right? This airline braided. And then you get your fittings. You guys ain't stupid. You can figure out, you know, bring in your air shock to, the, uh, to a shop and say, hey, I need this to go from here to here to here. And they'll give you the fittings and you can uh, get them to work, okay? Um, so that works perfectly. I can load this car up like you would not believe I use solid bushings just for that reason I can load the back up with camping gear I can load the trunk with camping gear and I have one of them them extensions that go on to the hitch right them square box deals that hold 500 pounds so I can load the back of this car up with a thousand pounds and shock gear, air up those shocks and I'm good to go just don't drive like a retard um, yeah so I'm happy I, I'm, I'm really glad I did the, the all the rubber in this car this thing, snappy right you know you don't really notice it as the stuff wears out you, you replace this stuff snappy performance on the steering I'm quite impressed um, no more of that body roll like I had before and uh, yeah I'm trying to think of any pointers oh yeah one more thing so when you go ahead and you tighten tighten these down there's a nut under here that's OEM right so what I did is I, I used an extra nut and this is a thin one, so this actually compresses against the other one. I've had problems with those backing off. Uh, don't ask me why. It's 47 pounds of torque or whatever. Good luck getting that on there when you're holding this with a 7 millimeter and not trying not to strip it out. Some people use an air wrench, but if you go two nuts in the air wrench, you'll spin the shaft and ruin the shock, right? So what I've done, because I don't want to risk damaging the shock and I don't want to strip this out, I smacked it really hard with the air wrench real quick on the first nut. And then I put a jam nut on top. It's 22 millimeter on that jam nut that's holding the, that's tight down on the OEM nut, right? That ain't coming off, okay? So that ain't gonna back off on me. So hopefully that helps some people out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can, I can cover that might help. I think I pretty much covered it all. So yeah, good luck. Uh, hopefully uh, that helps some people out with their projects with respect to the bushings. If you've got any questions on this stuff, feel free to leave a comment, and it always helps to, to uh, uh, thumbs up. Uh, I kind of appreciate it. You know, mostly I do these videos for me. You know, I do it to help other people out, but it's for me, so I can go back and say, okay, what did I do when I was doing that project, you know? So, but if you've got any questions on this stuff, feel free to hit me up. I'll uh, do my best to help you out. All right, have a good night. Take care.